So, good morning, happy Friday. And I guess let's start out by um, just settling in, getting nice and comfortable like we always do. And as you close your eyes and you find a very comfortable seat, I'd like you to bring your attention to your heart center. And ask yourself, what does your heart yearn for? What is something that just keeps on calling to you? Maybe it's been calling to you your entire life since you were little. Maybe it's something that just started calling recently. Is there something that calls to you that your mind argues with, that your mind gives you the list of reasons why this can't be your heart's desire, why it makes no sense, why it would be too hard or not profitable, or you'd be laughed at, or whatever it is. So maybe you'll find something, maybe you won't. Just let that question float. What does your heart yearn for? Let your breath settle into your body as you turn your eyes inward. So much information on the inside. I truly believe that we come here as us with all of our baggage and all of our greatness and all of our circumstances because it's exactly who we're supposed to be. And I also believe that the only thing that stands in the way of me living a life of pure love, of pure karma, of pure bhakti, the only thing that stands in the way of the stories that my mind teaches me is not knowing that I am enough exactly as I am, that every single part of me, the parts that I deem perfect and the parts that I deem imperfect, Every single part is actually pure perfection for who I am and what I came here to do. Thinking about the idea of bhakti, of selfless devotion. So that's what bhakti is. It's a spiritual path of pure devotion. It's selfless service to a spiritual guide. It's this unquestioning, trusting devotion to that. What if your spiritual guide was your heart? What if each one of us embraced our own hearts, our own path as our spiritual guide? And what if we were selflessly, totally trusting and devoted to that? What would life look like? Right in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna teaches that bhakti is the supreme path, that it's the easiest and most effective way to reach enlightenment, just through pure conscious devotion to seeing love in all things, beginning with yourself, beginning with your own heart, it is said that the path of bhakti leads to shakti, a true experience of the universe of God within the self. And that's what we strive for, right? That feeling of peace and pure connection, of knowing that we're okay in this human body, in this human world, right? We, we, we long for ease and for peace and for grace in this human life. It's called sahajpad, this ease in this human path. So what would it look like if you could embrace your own heart, your own inner wisdom, your own intuition as your spiritual guru? What if you allowed yourself to be completely devoted to being the love that flows through you? What would it look like to be so devoted to that, to trust it so much that you just simply show up as you, as pure love? I have to read you a little bit of a story and then we will move forward. It's a story about a spiritual teacher who was very strong and very powerful and had this ashram where people came to be healed and for devotion and for peace. And one day a woman walked into the ashram and there were no women disciples. And she began to serve him. She spoke very little. She asked for nothing. She just began to serve. And he would come down and his space would be cleaned and there would be delicious food. And then in the morning he started hearing this beautiful voice reciting Japji, his morning prayers. And he found that voice, her voice, just resonating through his mind all day and it gave him ease, right? And it opened up the way that he interacted with his disciples. She stayed there for a week and that was the end of the time that she was allowed to stay there. There were no women there. 
and he, she stayed beyond that. And some of the male disciples started complaining. And the guru looked at them and said, let her stay longer. I don't ever want to hear this again. And she stayed and they complained. And she stayed and they complained. She stayed for years and years in selfless, quiet devotion, just showing up as her, doing what she was guided to do. Her name is Devi Pate, and she eventually became very well known for her healing and for her devotion to humankind, for her love. She didn't push against the people that said she didn't belong there. She didn't leave because she said they, they said she didn't belong there. She didn't try to be anything other than who she was. She showed up pretty much in silence and cooked and cleaned and loved. She didn't judge herself. She didn't let her ego say, women don't have to do this. Men should be helping me. She just did what she was led to do. And as a result, she became famous. She became well known for her healing. She did so much good and she supported her guru in a way that allowed him to be even more than he had been before he met her. Can we do that in our lives? Can we show up as who we are and know that that is enough? So take that into your practice, into your world today. Take another breath or two, silence. And on the next inhale, let your hands come to your heart center, palms together. And we'll open with Om Namo, Guru Dev Namo. Inhale. Om Namo. Guru Dev Namo. Om Receive the blessings of the inner guru. Feel your heart open wide to embrace, to absorb the wisdom from within. And then moving right into our next chant together, Ad Gadena May. Celestial communication version, three times together. Ad gade name juga gade name sad gade name city guru deve. Ad gade name jugad gade name sad gade name city guru deve name Ad gade name jugad gade name sad gade name siri guru deve name. Was feel
What are you devoted to? Calling of your heart or something else? Inhale deeply, prayer up to the sky. Navel center up and back, pelvic floor lifting, lifting. Everything reach into the heavens. Then as you exhale, arms slowly through your auric field, moving to the earth. As your fingers touch the floor, really diving in head first into that energy of heaven and earth meeting right here, right now. The whole universe inside of you. Bhakti leads you to Shakti, the experience of God of the universe filling you as you. Letting your hands come to your knees. I'm going to start off with a little bit of breath work. We'll do, yeah, we'll do some um, segmented breathing, some ratio breathing. So when we emphasize the inhale, when we do breath work, it brings us vitality. It brings us energy. It activates the sympathetic nervous system. When we emphasize the exhale, it moves us into the parasympathetic nervous system. It brings us to a place of calm. So I think what we'll do is we'll do one quick inhale. This is a very energizing, naughty cleansing breath. I'm not, it's not energizing. It's, um, it's a soothing, but it's naughty clearing. So it's going to be one quick inhale through the nose. Hold for four. Exhale for a count of two. So it's going to look like this. <laughs> Got it? So... Quick sniff in, hold for a count of four, exhale for a count of two, begin again. Good. Close your eyes and go for it. Letting your mind stay connected to the count and to the breath. As we move down our path of bhakti, with selfless devotion, particularly if we begin to focus on our true heart's desire, if we begin to realize it, move toward it, we come up across against something called Shaktipad. Shaktipad is, some, for some people, a dark night of the soul questioning of everything that they ever believed in. It's a wall that rises up on the path of anyone who's looking for their truth. Keep going, a few more. The only way through Shaktipad is through it. To continue that selfless, faithful devotion to your path, even when your mind questions it, even when your mind screams and rails against it, no, not this. Quieting the mind, following the heart, moving through that dark night of the soul, knowing that the sun will shine again on the other side. Everybody encounters that in one way or another, many times, probably over a lifetime. Keeping your eye on the yearnings of your heart. The next time that you exhale, turn to your natural breath. And then inhale your arms up to the sky, twisting your body over to the right, right hand. Our left hand comes onto the right knee, right hand behind you. From here, move into breath of fire. Even inhales and exhales in and out through the nose, navel pumping up and back on the exhale very naturally, body relaxed. 
Inhale your arms up to the sky, twist to the left. Let your tongue move through your lips, curl it if you can, and begin Sakali breath. <sighs> Inhaling through that curled tongue, exhaling through the nose. Some people cannot curl their tongues, that's fine. Just let it protrude a bit. Feeling that cool inhale. Exhaling through the nose. Inhale those arms up to the sky. Twist to the other side, breath of fire. Inhale up, twist. Sakali breath. Inhale up, palms together overhead. Bring those palms to your heart center. Pause and feel. What is your heart calling you to? Maybe something as simple as getting out in nature a little more, or maybe something as elaborate as going to try out for a play taking voice lessons or moving to another country. Whatever it is, what is your heart yearning for? And here, make your way to your back. If you have a block, bring it nearby. Once you get there, bring your knees into your chest. Just squeeze your nose to your knees for a moment. And relax your head and your shoulders down to the mat. As you bring your feet up in the air, legs up the wall without a wall. Maybe begin to circle your ankles a little bit here. Point and flex those toes. And then placing your hands on the outside of your thighs, slowly begin to open your legs to a nice wide V. And then close them and open and close open this time you're going to bend your knees bring the soles of your feet toward each other coming into baddha konasana in the sky and grab a hold of your toes here and just gently bring them in closer to your groins letting your lower back relax letting the rest of your body relax Taking a hold of your big toes or your ankles, you're going to leave your left leg where it is. You're going to straighten your right leg. And then bend that knee, bring it back in, move to the other side. Just keep alternating, opening and returning. Then as the soles of the feet come back together, this time, Begin to open both of your legs up to the sky and then bring them back in. This is a version of frog pose. So if frog pose standing, the kundalini style frog pose, which is kind of like a squats, if that's too much on your knees, this is a beautiful alternative. And the next time that your feet come in, stay. Release your hands to your sides. Bend your knees, but don't plant your feet quite yet. Just bend your knees, let your feet hover. Maybe do some circles with your knees. One direction. 
and then the other. As you come to center, plant those feet, knees bent. Right ankle onto left knee, reaching in for the left thigh, bring your leg up. Your which one? The leg that's extended. I'm having trouble with my left and my right. Um, you can either have it straight reaching up to the sky or you can have the shin parallel to the ground. I believe that's your right foot. Just breathe here, enjoying the stretch, the opening. Knowing that you are enough, knowing that everything you do is exactly the way it's supposed to be. As long as you're doing it from your authentic nature, from your heart. Inhale both legs up to the sky as you release your hands. And as you exhale, switch sides. Reaching in for that left thigh, uh, right thigh, sorry. If you're extending that leg, keeping the knee bent, shin parallel to the mat. Letting your breath fill your entire body. Inhaling big. Exhaling completely, really releasing, making space. Releasing your hands, both legs up to the sky. Bending your knees, planting your feet. If you have that block nearby, you're going to press into your feet, lifting your hips. You're going to place the block on its lowest level, nice and wide, under your sacrum, moving into a supported bridge pose. If you don't have a block, then you can just remain in constructive rest with your lower back on the floor, your knees moving in toward each other. Long deep breaths here. Noticing what your mind does in its spare time while you're lying here. Body relaxing. How busy is your mind and are those thoughts constructive? Are those thoughts guiding you in the direction of your heart's yearning? Or are they bringing you to a place that you're devoted to something that you really don't want? Are you devoted to somebody else's dream or idea of you? Are you devoted to being somebody other than who you truly are? If anybody has ever told you that you are supposed to be someone or something else, I'm telling you right now that they were wrong. Nobody knows our hearts yearning. Nobody, nobody knows what's right for us more than we do. And when I say that, I don't mean the mind, the lower mind, the manas, that busy mind that is full of all kinds of gathered information from this human path. The higher mind that knows your soul, that's so connected, that booty nature. Get quiet, listen to the whisperings your higher mind, know who you are, get to know yourself, love yourself. Maybe you already do. Shout that to the world in whatever way moves you quietly like Debbie Patti. Get on the stage and sing on Broadway, whatever it is that moves you. From here, you're going to bring your left leg up to the sky and your right leg, finding yourself in a supported shoulder stand, a little bit of an inversion.
you want to, you can circle those ankles here or you can stay perfectly still. Long deep breaths, breathing from the soles of your feet all the way up to the crown of your head. Letting the exhale move from the crown of your head back to the soles of your feet. A few more seconds here. I'm going to read you a little poem. This is what I have to say to you. Live as if the earth exhales blessings in your direction, as if trees speak their deepest secrets in your ear, as if bird songs could lift you outside your ordinary state of mind and bring you into truth. Be the creative juice flowing through the universe. Be compassion in action and wholeness in motion. Be silence and stillness, the ocean of love, so palpable that not one cell of you disputes the truth that you are love. Be so open to your destiny that it unfurls like a banner in the sky, a sign saying, live with gratitude, generosity, and grace. Inhale deeply, and as you exhale, bend your knees, plant your feet. Lift those hips, release your block. Lower your hips and take a moment to just lie there Letting your lower back sink into the mat. Allowing the energy of transitioning from one posture to the next. And then with your hands beginning at your sides, palms down. Move your feet a little closer to your butt. And begin flowing bridges here, inhaling, arms overhead, hips come up, exhaling, lowering. You just keep going. Your energy flow, connecting to your inner dance, your inner rhythm. Being in selfless service to making your life something beautiful, something that makes your heart sing. What if everybody took responsibility for making their own hearts happy? Very doable, right? Being responsible for your own heart, not everybody else's. Next time that your hips come down, your hands come down, stay. Bring your knees into your chest, arms out to a T. Shift your hips to the right as your legs, as your knees move to the left, coming into a spinal twist. Gaze to the right. You can leave your knees bent here, or you can begin to extend your legs straight over to the right. I mean the left, oh gosh. And if your legs are extended, bend them again, bring those knees in, move back to center, lift, shift to the other side, arms out, gaze in the opposite direction of the knees. And again, either weaving those knees bent or extending those legs straight. path of devotion, the path of bhakti, the path of trust, because we don't always know how we're supposed to show up in the lives of people who cross our paths. Come back to center. Knees into your chest, rock up and down on your spine. Either rock up to a seat or roll over to your right and come up to a seat. And from here, you can sit up on a blanket for a moment. 
I'm going to do a little bit of a meditation, say two-part meditation to bring you into equilibrium, to find that place of balance, of centeredness inside of you. So you're going to take your hands, clasp them in front of your heart. So they're just going to be hold, you're going to be holding hands with yourself. I love that, holding hands with yourself. There's something about this that feels so comforting, right? And you're going to, in your mind, chant Satanama. And as you do, you're going to rhythmically clasp your hands. So it's going to be an inhale through your nose as you clasp your hands, four, four inhales through the nose. With each inhale, you're going to be saying sa ta na ma as you squeeze your hands. Once you've inhaled, you're going to hold there. You're going to press the tip of your tongue up to the roof of your mouth. Hold the breath in as long as you can. Exhale, and then do it again. <laughs> Make sense? Everybody good? All right, go for it. Keep going. So yeah, we never know what our role is in the interactions with the people that are placed in front of us. Sometimes we're supposed to be the bad guy. Right? We were not put here to make everybody happy. We were put here to show up in our authenticity and play the role that we were given in this human drama. Our heart has the lines memorized, it knows the lines, it knows the role. Our mind is always trying to alter the script. It doesn't mean we don't have free will, we do, that's part of it all. But are you coming from a place of the authentic you, your true heart, your true voice, your satanama? Or are you coming from a place where your mind tells you you're supposed to come from? Are you following the rules that were given to you once you got here and forgot who you really were? Are you going against the feeling in your gut? One more minute. We've learned that if something, if I feel like something is rubbing me the wrong way, then I need to pause and sit and check in with that inner guru. Is it uncomfortable because it's something I'm supposed to move through? Or is it uncomfortable because it's something I'm supposed to move away from? The next time you exhale, Move into your natural breath. And then inhale deeply, squeeze your hands, squeeze everything up. Exhale through your mouth. Again, inhale. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Even press that tongue up to the roof of your mouth really hard. Exhale through your mouth. One more. <sighs> Eyes closed, hands remain where they are. Everything relaxed. Pause and feel. And opening your eyes, bring your hands in front of your Heart, the right arm on top of the left, so actually stacking one arm on top of the other. And this time you're going to chant Satanama out loud. And as you chant it, you're going to move your arms just slightly. So it's going to be Satanama, Satanama. And as you chant, you're going to pump your navel. Satanama, Satanama, Satanama. Eyes closed, soft gaze. Gazing at the back of your eyelids. Satanama.
can be feeling the energy changing, shifting inside of you, bringing you into equilibrium, allowing yourself to settle into the truth of this moment. Inhale your arms up to the sky, squeeze everything up, stretch your fingers wide, hold, 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 hold a little longer, a little longer. And as you exhale, shake your arms, shake everything, shake it all out. Move and stretch and twist and dance. And then let your hands rest on your knees, palms down, eyes closed, allowing the energy of the earth to rise up and ground you. See if you can feel everything settling into balance inside of you. Equilibrium, when we're balanced inside, we can move through the waves, the bumps of life on the outside. And still maintain that inner balance, that inner barometer. Still maintain that connection with our inner truth. Feel that. And ask yourself again, what does my heart yearn for? And am I devoted to that? Your hands still on your knees, your eyes closed, begin torso circles, letting your entire torso rotate around your pelvis, really moving back, stretching forward. With each turn and each twist, falling in love even deeper with yourself, with your heart. And knowing that when you can fall in love with your own heart, and you're falling in love with all of the hearts around you, every heart in this universe, because we're all connected through that heart energy. Next time you come forward, pause and move in the other direction. In the energy world, when someone comes to me, and they know that they're overly connected to a loved one and they're feeling other people's emotions. We release the energy in different chakras that connect us to people, right? Like the second chakra, the third chakra, but the heart chakra, it always stays connected to everything and everyone. The heart is wise. It doesn't take on what's not, what doesn't belong to it. The heart energy, we support each other through that that never needs to be disconnected. It's when we try to give people our vitality or we try to give them guidance in the way of trying to force them down a different path. That's what saps us of our energy. Come to stillness. Let your legs come out nice and wide. Place one hand on each thigh. And then just begin to slide your right hand down your right leg, moving toward the toes, stretching to the right. Come back up to center, slide to the left. Just keep going. So often we think the energy of our heart chakra is out of balance, but most of the time it's just working overtime because it's trying to 
compensate for all of that stuff that goes on in our other chakra energies. It's the balancing point between our humanness, this physical body, this physical existence, and our spiritual nature, our connection to all that is, our knowing that everything on this earth is finite, except the energy of who we are and what everything else is. That is infinite. It's why when people die in the physical sense, we feel them around us. They, they get messages to us. We're paying attention if our hearts are open. And if you experience that, don't let anybody tell you that it's anything other than a message. Know in your heart that's what it is. Our essence is eternal. Changes clothing just like we do in human form. But we are amazing and perfect, and that is what begs our devotion. The next time that you come up to center, stay. Inhale your arms up to the sky, twist to the left, fold over your left leg, reaching for your toes or your ankles or your shins or your knee. Begin to press your hands on either side of your ankle and slowly drag your hands up as you bring your body up, giving yourself a little massage on the leg. And then inhale up to center and twist to the right. Exhale, drape down. Breathing, breathing, breathing. Be the creative juice flowing through the universe. Be compassion in action and wholeness in motion. I love, love, love those lines. Every one of us is so darn creative. Every one of us is so darn unique. And yet we're all so connected. Slowly begin to drag those hands up as you bring yourself up giving yourself that massage. Let the soles of your feet come together as your knees go wide, Baddha Konasana. Place your hands on your shins and just start to rock from side to side, letting one knee come down and then the other. Rocking on your sit bones. Kind of like how we move through life, right? We move off center, we go from one side to the other. And then we slowly begin to move back to center, come back to center. Close your eyes. And if you're still feeling the energy rocking from side to side, as you direct your physical body into stillness, we shake up our energy like a snow globe and then we let it all settle trusting that everything is going to settle into place exactly where we need it to be right now for whatever the task is at hand and then opening your eyes you're going to roll over your Knees on over your legs onto all fours, coming onto hands and knees. Do some spinal flexes here, cat cows. If we could just remember that all we need to do is know what it is we need to move through the task at hand, the interaction at hand, whatever it is in front of us, it's all we need to know. We don't have to know what we're going to need to know for whatever it is we're going to do next week and next year. We just need to connect to what we need right now. Who am I supposed to show up as? How can I be devoted 
to the path of my heart's yearning in this situation? What words, what actions will support that? Come to stillness. Curl your toes. Lift your hips up to the sky. Take a nice stretch and downward facing dog. And then step your right foot forward between your hands. Let your left knee drop to the mat. Make sure you're not right on that knee. Let it slide back a bit. And when you're ready, inhale up on Janayasana, arms up to the sky. From here, maybe come into goddess arms, goalpost arms, palms facing forward, elbows bent, upper arms parallel to the ground. And then begin to open and close your fingers, making a fist and an opening. Letting some of that lymph fluid start to circulate and move. And then inhale those arms all the way up. Stretch, stretch, stretch. Exhale your hands down to frame your front foot. Pressing into your hands, step your front foot back to meet your back foot. Step the opposite leg forward. I think it's the left. <laughs> Bringing that knee down to the mat. Rising up on Janayasana. This time, take your hands and interlace them behind your head. Press your hands into your head, your head into your hands, elbows moving back opening 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 and then let the elbows move toward each other head round a little bit and back round a little bit and then open again and just do a few cat cow like motions here balancing inhaling your arms up to the sky exhaling down framing that foot front foot steps back Downward facing dog. Stretch it out here. And then knees to the mat. Nice and wide, big toes together. Melt into child's pose. Long deep breaths. Come onto your fingertips, walk your upper body over to the right. And back to center, over to the left. Back to center. Let your arms be outstretched, palms up. You're still in child's pose. And this time, instead of asking the question, maybe make a statement. I am ready to receive the energy what my heart longs for. I'm ready to receive the energy of what my heart longs for. I am ready to be devoted to that. And if that doesn't feel like your truth, then I am getting ready to be ready. As long as we're moving in the direction of showing up in our authenticity, sometimes that's really hard. This world we live in is not always receptive to 
supporting us in our most vulnerable times. It takes courage to rip your heart open and bear it to the world. You don't have to trust that others will be gentle with it. You just have to trust that you'll get all you need to move through whatever it is you need to move through in this moment. Another breath or two here. And slowly walk yourself up to a seat. Before we make our way to our backs, we're just going to do three minutes of Sat Kriya together. So make yourself comfortable. Put a blanket underneath if you'd like. When you're ready, you're going to inhale your arms up to the sky. Fingers are going to interlace. Pointer fingers are going to be pressing forward. For women, the left thumb is on top of the right. Your fingers are going to be reaching toward the sky. Your spine is nice and tall, but the rest of your body, everything is relaxed. You're going to begin together. Sat Nam. With each Sat, you're going to pull your navel in. Nam, you're going to relax. Three minutes, let's go. Sat Nam. Sat Nam. Sat Nam. Sat Nam. Sat Nam. Eyes focused up. Sat Nam. 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 Sat. 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 Nam. Sat Nam 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 Inhale, squeeze everything up, reach those fingers up. Imagine in your mind energy spiraling from the base of your spine all the way up, Kundalini rising. Feel that energy elevating you, uplifting you. Exhale. Pause with your hands at your heart center. A few natural breaths. And then slowly make your way to your backs. Once you get there, taking any final stretches or twists. Really into Shavasana.
The sun shines down and its image reflects in a thousand different pots filled with water. The reflections are many, but they are each reflecting the same sun. Similarly, when we come to know who we truly are, we will see ourselves in all people. Slowly begin to deepen your breath. Bringing your awareness to your fingers and toes. Slowly introducing movement. If you're on your back, and your knees come into your chest. Twisting one side and then the other. If you're seated, you can take a spinal twist. And then letting the soles of your feet, palms of your hands come together, connecting to that amazing inner fire. Rocking up and down on your spine or rolling over to your right if you're on your back. We'll all meet, palms together at our heart center. If you know the closing prayer and you'd like to join me, please do. May the long time sun shine upon you, all love surround you, and the pure light within you guide your way on. Please join me in sealing our practice with a long sat nam. Deep inhale. So now floating your thumbs to your third eye, bowing your head to your heart. Be loved, believe, and be true to you. Satnam.